Hi, people. Oh, I hope the lighting's okay on this. Um, it's Thursday. I haven't vlogged this week. Um, I don't know if I did. No, I probably didn't last week because I uploaded on Thursday. Yeah, so Friday was a hot mess of a flight. Air Canada flight sucked. Missed my train. And then had to take a last-minute flight on WestJet, WestJet to get to Ottawa. But I spent a couple days in Ottawa. I spent a day in Montreal and hang out with my friend Muriel. Um, and then I made it back to Toronto on a late train. Transportation is just cursed with me, apparently. Um, but it's Thursday. The day was the second day of my conference and the first day of the expo. And I started going through things and realizing how much I've already accumulated in those few days. So first off, right at the bat, I did get to see my a couple people in my family, and they gave me one of them gave me a late um, Christmas gift, which is the illustrated um, Fantastic Beasts Where to Find Them, and it's so freaking pretty. And I don't have any of the like Hogwarts library books that they've done the fa the illustrated editions of, so I was really happy. And I also got a like. Um, it's almost like a giant Lego Funko Pop kind of combined, uh, Mr. Sherlock Holmes. And then I also got Elvis Dumbledore, like the Jude Law character um, from Crimes of Grindelwald. So I'm very happy about that. Um, I also, when I was in Ottawa and Montreal, picked up eight books because I have no self-control. So, but actually, these first four I picked up for a total of $15. So... $15 for four books and candles, like, kind of legit. And it was not book outlet. But the first one I picked up was The Dragon Pearl by Yoon Ha Lee. I was really curious about this one. I remember a friend of mine reading one, it was either this one or The Storm Runner, and being like, I didn't love it. And I was like, oh, that's depressing. But I feel like it was The Storm Runner, because I feel like I've seen that one in my bookstore in at home, and that's why I kept hesitating to pick it up. But I had a $10 off coupon, and it was only $15, so I got it for $5, which a okay with. I also picked up The Boleyn Queen by Laura Anderson. My friend recommended this to me. It's an alternate history of if Boleyn had a boy and, like, didn't get beheaded by her husband. So, very curious. It was on discount for $6, or you could get three for 10 So, I picked up this one, and then I picked up two classic-y ones. So, I picked up Dracula by Bram Stoker. I actually don't own any copies of this. Um, and I also picked up um, Lady Chatterley's, Chatterley's Lover. I've never actually read this. I've seen... I don't know if there's more than two, but I've seen two of the adaptations. The one they did, like, years ago with Sean Beam when he was a young hunk, and and, um, and then the one they did like two years ago with Richard Madden. So I know it's supposed to be like very like sort of brown, but groundbreaking for what the time period was that a main character in 1928, the main female character would have an affair and like the woman would act on her desires because apparently we weren't supposed to do that before then. Um, I also for $5, I think, picked up The Paris Winter by Imogen Robertson. That's what I really miss about having an actual bookstore in like a city. They have clearance sections in these bookstores in the city. We don't in my city, so I picked up a bunch of discounty stuff. They also had A Curse So Dark and Lonely by Bridget Kimmerer, Kim, Kim I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, but um, I thought it came out before because it's Bloomsbury. I've never seen them release anything before, but I picked it up on a Saturday when I went to go see the BTS movie and I went to the bookstore across the street while I was waiting for my ride and I was like, oh, it must be out. And I picked it up and I was like, and then I got home and I was like, oh shit, it's not out. I bought it when it was early set, which I don't love doing because I don't think... I don't think the authors get credit for that stock sold, which I don't understand that. But anyways, for $2, I picked up a book called Dark Metropolitis, uh, or Me Dark Metropolis. Um, it's supposed to be set, I believe, in Berlin. Either way, I think they're supposed to be like zombies or something. So for $2, and the cover was kind of cool, sounded all right. And I finally found a copy of As She Ascends by Jodie Meadows. That one and the Bowling King um, one were ones I really, really wanted. I was also looking for, is it Trader's Run by Aaron Beatty? And I kept looking everywhere and I kept saying, like, um, not in stock, not in stock. And I was like, that's odd. It's a city, like Ottawa and Montreal. And then when I went to go look at it in Ottawa or in Toronto bookstores, inventory the next day, it said, like, no longer sh stocked in stores. And I was like, oh, all right. Okay, but um, 
And then I stopped myself for a couple of days. Um, and I just got back from the conference. The expo opened today and tomorrow. Tomorrow there's an author signing I really, really hope I get to go to. But I picked up Children's of the Bloodlands by S.M. Bieko. I actually don't own book one. This is book two in the series. And I got it signed because she's here doing signings. She was here last year doing signings for the first book. And I saw the line and went, no, 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 not waiting. So hopefully I end up, and it's a finished copy too, so I hope uh, I can get the um, first book ASAP, either through the library or buy it. Um, I also, this is the first book I saw as soon as I entered the expo and like lunged for it, White Rose. This is middle grade um, World War II by Kip Wilson. I'm super excited for it. I've been excited since I heard about it. I also picked up The Lost Coast by Amy Rose Capetta. I'm kind of surprised they didn't have any arcs of Once and Future. Um, considering how hard I saw the authors, the, uh, them pushing the author at the American Library Conference, which is like a couple days ago, I think, or still going on today. I'm kind of surprised they didn't have any ARCs. This is the largest conference in Canada. So I'm a little confused. So I grabbed that one. I was curious about it anyways, but I'm kind of disappointed. Side note, this I feel like maybe it was just, I don't know, maybe I was just more excited because last year was my first year, but like, I feel like a lot of the publishers brought, like, not a lot of arcs. Like, I want, I was the first one in the expo, and, like, literally by the time I, like, went around one aisle and came back, like, Penguin Random House was empty, HarperCollins was empty, and then you're like, yeah, that's it. And I was like, and everyone, no one seemed to have arcs from them. I was like, what is happening? But, I don't know. Oh, well. But I also picked up Inspection by Josh Mellerman. Honestly, it sounds kind of cool, but the, the, I mean, he's the author of The Bird Box. I've never read either of them, but I have two friends that are really interested in it, so I picked it up and grabbed it. So I'm going to send that to them. I also grabbed the second to last arc that I found of A Sorcery of Thorns um, by Margaret Rogerson. I'm not sure if I'll, I don't think, honestly, oh, that's probably why it was there. It's bent on the bottom. Um... She's author of, oh my god, why is the I keep going? I'm sorry. Um, she's author of An Enchantment of Ravens. I didn't love that book. I didn't get all the hype about it. Um, I think the cover's all right, but I just don't think it's going to be something I'm into. Um, so, But I have a couple friends that want that, so that's going to them. I also got a signed copy of a book called Above the Star by Alexis Murray Shute. I think she's a smaller, more self published author, but it's blurbed as A Wrinkle in Time Meets the Princess Brat. And I was like, you know what? She was there. She signed it for me. If I can get it open. Mm. Woo! If I could get it open. Oh. And it's supposed to be a trilogy, and I'm trash for trilogies. Oh, there we go. So she signed it for me. So um, there's supposed to be some sort of like parallel jumping or something like that. So that's kind of cool. So I'll give it a go. I also got The Crown by Jennifer Robson, which I was really excited to see that she was there. And I got it signed. And got an arc of Blood Witch by Susan Denard. I am currently in the midst of rereading the first, well, I've read the first book. I'm going to reread the second and then the novella. And I get to that. Um, I am insanely excited that I got an arc of Wicked Saints. And then uh, by Emily Duncan. I've heard nothing but amazing things about this. Um, I saw one, one display arc that was like, do not take only display arc for We Rule the Night, Once in Future. Um, oh, what's um, Derek Miller Millman's next book? Um, all these like mostly anticipated books were like shoved behind other arcs and they only had one for display and I was like, eh, this seems like weirdly display organized, but all right. And all the publishers did it. I don't know. Um, I also grabbed The Binding by Bridget Collins. I thought this was out already or maybe that's just in the UK. I've seen a bunch of people get these like gorgeous um, like paint stained uh, pages and all that stuff. So maybe it's just different release date in Canada, like months. I don't know. And lastly, I got The Ventriloquist by E.R. Rem Sabor. I just know it's supposed to be World War II. I'm trash for historical fiction. The cover looks cool. There's planes. And there was a typewriter. It sounded really cool. So I think I was much more reasonable this time. I feel like they were, like, just handing them out last year, like, lunging them at everyone. Like, take these arcs. And then look, this time there were a lot of, like, adult fiction, like, self-growy, like, mother's like family gets murdered and she goes on a self-discovery sort of you know those kind of adult books which like I don't know any people who read those and I don't think I'm the only one because like literally no one was touching the books I feel bad like there must be people that read those but like 
I don't know. Apparently, it's just not. It's on my wheelhouse, but I'm surprised that no, no libraries are really crapping them. So, this is what I got. I do have a reading and recommendation session tomorrow that normally comes with an arc or two. So, I might get a couple more. And I'm going to go eat dinner soon. But then I'm going to back a Phoenix sci fi and fantasy bookstore here in Toronto. And Sebastian de Castell is in town because I think his wife's at the same conference I'm at. So, I brought the three books that he released this year Soulbinder. What's that one? Ah, oh, what's his. I mean, it's not. it wasn't released this year. I don't think it was Traders Blade or the last book in the Great Coat series. I have to get that signed. And then the two books in the Spellsinger series that came out this year. So i got to get those signed. And I'm hoping we'll get more information on if he's going to release another adult, fan or adult fantasy series. Because the Great Coats is done. Or well, maybe not. So that's what I'm going to do today. Um, I'll check in tomorrow if anything else happens. I honestly doubt it. But that's been my thing. I just realized that this probably sounded very entitled or trashy or something like that to publishers. I love all the stuff they do. It was just very, I, I don't know, it was just less than last year. So I was like, huh. But I'm very excited. Wicked Saints. Oh, I'm like, that's one of my most anticipated. The Vendril Quest one wasn't even on my radar, but it legit, like, I'm peaked interest-wise. Like, I'm almost like, maybe I should start that one tonight. Um, oh, on that note, checking in, I have, like... I've been working on because I didn't want to take the book with me um, because of how chaotic my traveling was with so many delayed and late and uh, every trains and planes and whatever. I didn't get to re or listen to a ton, but I'm listening to the audiobook for Arch Enemy and I have an hour left. So I'm going to try and finish that today, actually, before I go to dinner and the book signing. And if so, high five to myself. I didn't read a ton in the month of January. Oh, my God, I just realized it's the last of January. These technically still all fall under the January haul. Oh my god. I think I'm going to make a two-part monthly haul. It's just too big. I'm sorry. Um, two different videos. I'm fairly certain I'm over 40 books. Um, between my buying and this conference and the Christmas gifts. Um, yeah. So it's probably going to be two parts. So vlog will probably be Monday, which I'm telling you this now, but you wouldn't see it until then. Um, Tuesday will probably be February TBR. Um, whew. Maybe something on Thursday of like just or January wrap up, and then maybe the next Tuesday will be part one of the haul and then part two. I don't know something along those lines. I'm sorry, it's just massive, and the video would be like a billion hours long and a pain to edit into one. So that's probably what we're gonna do. Hello, people. It's Friday. Uh, I had like a pretty good day today, and I'm very happy with some of the books I managed to accumulate. So um. Last night I went to the Sebastian de Castell signing, which was awesome. I'm actually like, there wasn't a ton of people. It was also hella cold. <laughs> um, but I got him to sign the last three books of his that I had that weren't signed. So now all my Sebastian de Castell books signed. I also just made sure I had no self-control and picked up Sorcerer to the Crown by Zen Cho. I had never heard of it. And then they released the cover for the second book, um, like, I don't know, three weeks ago. And I guess they changed the cover, which... For some reason, that didn't deter me. I don't, I don't know. Either way. But I put it up. I heard, like, pretty good things. Not a lot of stuff. And it was just very recently when they released the cover. I think people forgot about this book. Um, but I picked it up. So hopefully I can read it soon. I also managed to talk my way into getting the display-only copy arc of Enchante. I'm very curious about this. Because the premise sounds like it could be amazing if done properly. And I, I loved this cover. And then they changed the final cover to put a person, like, ombre on the background, which I just hate. <laughs> I, I legitimately don't know why it angers me so much. And my friend was like, it's kind of like the cover of Glitter, and you love the cover of Glitter. And I was like, but if you take the person off of the Glitter cover, it's just a white background. Whereas, like, I feel like this is perfect without some... I don't know. We'll see. So if I read it and like it, hopefully I like it. Because I think it's supposed to be a trilogy, last I heard. Um... Love Magic Revolution, but enchanté. I'm very curious about that. French Revolution. I think main character is like brother steals all their family's money, which they don't already have enough of to begin with. And so she starts making like a target of the king. I also wandered and just randomly picked up Stronger Than a Bronze Dragon by Mary Fan. Hadn't heard of it. Scanned it when I saw it on Goodreads. Saw that my friend Meg wanted to read it. So I... Honest to God, just took it out of pettiness, almost to make her jealous. But it actually does sound pretty cool. Um, 
um, main character wants a life of glory and revenge as a warrior who protects her village from shadow spirit. She has never been beyond the borders of her town. All that changes the day the Viceroy and his fleet of mechanical dragons arrive. It's the protection her village is desperate for, but will only be given in exchange for her hand in marriage. Which sounds up my alley. I also just randomly saw this cover and was like, could be kind of cool, called Eve of Man by G uh, Giovanna and Tom Fletcher. I think it was released already in the UK or like e-released or something like that because it looks like there's a decent amount of reviews on Goodreads for it. And they all seem pretty, pretty positive. Um, it's supposed to be the first in a new trilogy. The first girl born in 50 years, they call her Eve. The explosion, uh, the explosive start of a new trilogy, perfect for the fans of The Handmaid's Tale, Black Mirror, and Orphan Black. Now I have not read the Handmaid's Tale or seen any of those shows. Part of the reason being because I saw the trailers and was like, mm, that's something I'm going to get in, like insanely invested in and like not going to be able to get out. So I keep waiting for Black Mirror to just finish. <laughs> and I don't know that I'll ever watch The Handmaid's Tale. It just feels like it's too close to being real right now. Um, and Orphan Black. I don't know. I just haven't watched that. But maybe I will eventually. But it sounded pretty cool and the reviews were really good. I also... <laughs> These were not out yesterday. They suddenly appeared today. I'm very happy. An Affair of Poisons by Addie Thorley. I'm so excited for this book. I think it's also supposed to be a trilogy. Um, after unwittingly helping her mother poison King Louis the 14th, 17-year-old alchemist Mirabelle is forced to see her mother's shadow society um, in a horrifying new light. They're not heroes of the people, as they claim to be, but murderers. And... I'm excited for that. Oh, my God. I also picked up an ARC. This was definitely not there yesterday. As ARC available. They just had display copy. Um, Dealing in the Dreams. Um, Lilia Rivera. Oh, I, it's supposed to be, like, gang-ish, despite that cover. Like, I know it looks very flowery. But I've been kind of curious about this since they released the cover and read the summary. And I was like, hmm, that sounds kind of cool. But at night, Las Malsriasas. Criadas, sorry, uh, own the streets. She leads the fierce all-girl crew in the mega city, um, and they do unspeakable things to keep their place, which sounds interesting. Um, I also picked up a couple World War II, more adult historical fictions, but um, The Long Flight Home by Alan Holland, um, set amidst the London Blitz in World War II. Um, I'm also loving all of the historical fictions coming out with women spies, women pilots, all that stuff, because we just wrote about men for forever. So I picked up that one. And then also Mistress of the Ritz by Melanie Benjamin. I have heard of this author before, but I don't think I've actually read it. Um, she wrote The Aviator's Wife. I don't think I've read that book. But um, this is another one. Where a captivating novel based on the story of the extraordinary real-life American woman who secretly worked for the French Resistance during World War II while playing hostess to the invading Germans in the iconic Hotel Ritz in Paris. I feel like the Alice Network touched on this. And probably Codename Verity. Mind you, they were all about kind of women, spies, Paris, flights, yeah, all that stuff. So it would not surprise me. Also, swooped in and grabbed this as soon as I saw it. The Huntress by Kate Quinn. As a history person that studied World War II an awful lot and German and Russian, people did some weird things when they lived in, like, r rural areas during World War II. If they were not necessarily a part of, like, the Nazis or whatever, they did some weird stuff. Like, and there's this woman, the Huntress, who, like, I remember hearing bits and pieces of her, but, like, she'd welcome people to her home and then, like, feed them, like, Jewish children who escaped, and they'd show up, and she'd feed them, and then she'd bluntly just kill them. Um, and in this book, I guess, this guy escapes from a POW camp and then is knocks on her door when he's escaping, finds it in the woods um, with this woman that he's with, and she lets him in, feeds them, kills them, and then the woman escapes, though, and then everyone needs her help because she's the only one that they know of that can identify this assassin, crazy-ass lady. And so they need her help to find her. So that sounds right up my alley. And I'm very happy that I did not buy this book because I almost bought it, like, on Wednesday. Um, the Lost Girls of Paper. Um, once again, women, World War II spies. This woman is in New York, I believe. And she is at a train station, and she finds a suitcase. She opens the suitcase, which don't ever do that. Please don't ever do that, especially in 2019. Um, and it's filled with photos of women. And it finds out that all of the women in those photos were spies in World War II, um, I believe, for the Allies. Um, and they kind of haven't been seen since. And she goes on this mission to try and figure out what happened to them. And lastly, lastly... Um, 
the real reason I wanted to go today was Nikki Paupetro was there. Her book doesn't come out for like another two weeks, I think. Um, but they gave away free, which thank you to Simon & Schuster for that. That was wonderful. Um, they gave away um, free finished copies of Crown of Feathers early and she signed it. So, which BT dubs, the book is freaking beautiful. Um, just to slam Crown of Feathers with her signature. And it, there's nothing special on the bottom. It's just like a blood red um, under the dust jacket. And I'm very happy on this and it's fine. And I'm so happy. And now I have to pull some like Newt Scamander magic thing here to pack all this. I do have like a half empty suitcase um, to fly out tomorrow. Um, so I'm gonna see what I can put in there and what doesn't exceed the weight and the actual capacity space wise. Um, but I'm going out to dinner, see my dad, and um, hopefully I'll probably, there's a winner's where we're going, um, the mall we're going to, and so I hopefully will go pick up either a duffel bag or a backpack, and I think between that and the other bag that I brought, I can get everything home, hopefully without a $120 weight surcharge, because Air Canada loves to slap those on you. Um, yeah, that's been my day. Um, I'm still working on A Breath of Snow and Ashes. I'm not going to start anything until um, I get back. Um, probably on my feet on Monday, um, but I'm on chapter 79, I think, of A Breath of Snow and Ashes, so I think there's only, like, maybe a quarter or a third-ish at most of A Breath of Snow and Ashes left. I was wanting to finish it by the end of January, I just didn't get to it, so I'm just going to keep working my way through it, and when I finish it, the follow -up, so I won't put it in February, but in March, I'll put the next Outlander book on there, so yeah, that's been my day, and I hope you had a wonderful Friday. And I'm going to, like, power nap, charge my phone, and then go eat sushi, and then attempt to be a magical person with my suitcase there. Yeah, so I'll talk to you later. Hi, people. It is um, Sunday, February 3rd? Yes, it's the 3rd. Um, I was going to come home yesterday and try and film something to do, like, a review wrap-up to post on Sunday. Um, moral of this story for this trip was don't ever voluntarily fly Air Canada. So on my flight down to Toronto last week, my plane was an hour late getting in. So I missed the last train from Toronto to Ottawa to go visit my family. So I then had to run back. I ran to the train station trying to get it and I missed it by like 10 minutes. I was supposed to have like an hour and 45 minutes, almost two hours cushion time, but it's there, Canada. Um, and so then I ran back to the airport. I had to spend $350 on a WestJet flight because I'm not paying that to Air Canada after this. Um, to fly to Ottawa, and this was after their flight attendant told me I was being unreasonable about wanting them to stop, like, delay, just, like, like, let us get off the plane, but they had the balls after getting us there late, like, incredibly late. There was no weather delays. There was no bad weather. It's just Air Canada. Um, they had the balls to ask everyone over the PA system that there's a family that's trying to catch a connecting flight to Vienna in a row 36. So would it be okay if we all let them off or, uh, at first? Because, I mean, you know, screw it. You know, we're all going missing our crap anyways because they're incapable of keeping a freaking flight on time. Flew on WestJet that night. And WestJet is, like, incredibly nice. They let me pick the seat that I wanted. They made sure no one else was sitting beside me if it was doable. And they, yeah, and the people were, like, really nice. And then I had some good time and hung out with friends and family in Ottawa and Montreal and Toronto. Um, and then I took my flight home um, from Toronto to Calgary and then Calgary to where I live was the last flight. I got off in Calgary, turned my airplane mode off and was informed by Air Canada they had canceled my last flight home. Um, but they'd rebooked me on their next available flight today at four o'clock. So I was just supposed to hang out in Calgary for 26 hours, um, which no, no. So I got off and angrily talk to the people that were I don't know whatever they call them and they gave me rebooked me yeah this thing it was canceled because of weather reasons but they rebooked me on WestJet who was still capable to magically fly two more flights in in, in that area and one of them was literally the one that I got rebooked at was basically supposed to be the same time my Air Canada flight was at there's no major snow it's just cold that's it but for some reason 
There's a magical portal that stops Air Canada from flying here, I guess. But I was then have to go out of the secure area, tell them at the baggage area to go find and pull my baggage really quickly, keeping in mind I have an hour before this WestJet flight. Then I have to take it, go to WestJet, pay to recheck my bag because it's not their problem because it's a different airline now got to the checking area and was told there's actually not enough time to do that so they'll just send up my tr baggage whenever i get there but when i get home i should go to the baggage people and tell them you know my name file a lost baggage thing so when it shows up i'll get a notification and they told this to like 20 people that they were all doing this to uh that they canceled their flight I, that's the thing we were all on the same flight from toronto there was like easily over do over a dozen of us i still like i say almost 20 people they waited until all of us were on our plane to cancel the flight that we were going to connect to. And um, yeah, so then we finally, <laughs> WestJet, there, I got to sit once again. They were really nice and they sat me and let me pick my, my spot and um, didn't seat me beside anyone, which was fantastic. We left on time, got in 15 minutes early. Much of mud. And uh, I showed up and was told by the people at the Air Canada desk here that technically now, because I flew in via WestJet, that it was no longer their issue to deal with my baggage. So I then have people from WestJet running around Calgary trying to find Air Canada ticketed luggage. But WestJet finally got my stuff in last night. But naturally, my car wouldn't start because it's over. It's colder than minus 40 here. And naturally, the outside outlet that I plug my car into for some reason turned off and I didn't know that so I didn't know how to reset it so I spent the last four hours trying to figure out how the heck to do that and it's just been a day I still haven't gotten groceries it's like two o'clock in the afternoon my car still hasn't turned on I still haven't picked up my luggage so the filming of whatever I was going to do today Watson please don't you're gonna make something fall it's not going to happen. Um, so I'm just going to very quickly edit the vlog stuff that I do have, and I'll throw that up. I'm going to catch up. Just give me a week or two. Hi, baby. They're also being very needy and won't leave me alone because I was gone. Um, so, yeah. Um, I do, I have organized my haul pile. So the books that I picked up at the conference, hi, baby, um, are going to be February, and then some of them are going to be January. I have a buttload of January books, so I am going to have to make it two videos. There's like 50 books. I just, I can't really condense all that. Um, so I'm going to take a short day at work tomorrow. I have to go in for a couple things, but then I will come home early, and hopefully there will still be sunlight, and I can do a little bit of filming. Um, please be patient. I'm just trying to catch up, and I will catch up. Only progress. Um, I picked up Stiletto. I started that this morning. I'm on Chapter 7. I'm really enjoying it. Um, it's making me want to punch Air Canada just a little bit less, so that's always a good sign. Um, while I was gone, I had an order from Book Outlet um, get delivered, but technically I wasn't home until February to get it, so I'm not counting it as January, <laughs> January haul. It's counting as February. Um, I opened the box last night because I couldn't remember what the heck I ordered, so I don't know. You'll see it in the haul, but I picked up Dive Smack, uh, The Final Six, um, The Devil's Detective, The Dazzling Heights, um, and then the, th the um, oh, what's it called? Um, A Study in Charlotte, The Last of August, and The Case for Jamie, all of the Brittany Cavallaro books. I owned the first two in paperback, but all three of them are available on Book Island and Hardcover. And I was like, I'd rather just do that instead of having to wait for The Case of Jamie to come out in paperback, which I don't even think I had a date yet. And then there's a fourth book coming out that still hasn't even come out that I don't want to wait. I really enjoy those books. So, and they actually, I really like the hardcovers of them. So, I'm sorry, this is very rambly, probably vlog, but just don't ever volunteer to fly via Air Canada. It's always one thing or another. They never leave on time. They're the douchiest people, customer service. They act as if you're being unreasonable when you're upset that they canceled things for weather related purposes, yet other airlines can fly there. And just, yeah, so that's been my chaos of a week. Um, I'm going to keep working on Stiletto and hopefully if I can get my car to start eventually now that it's plugged in properly with actual power, um, I can go pick up my baggage and do like four loads of laundry. That's it too. I had one day off to do my laundry and then I have to go back to work like um, so that and then I have to go buy groceries because I emptied my tr my fridge out when I left. So. I I am proud of myself though in all my packing I had one checked bag and two carry-ons and I did not get any over baggage fees with all the arcs I brought back which 
pretty proud of myself. And yeah, that's been my absolute chaos of a week. And once again, don't ever voluntarily fly with Air Canada. It's just not worth the headache. I guarantee you that it's not worth the headache. 